Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you this morning. We're going to talk about Ripple's transformation to becoming a bank. Yeah. And we're also going to talk about the idea that we may be seeing the all-time high for XRP once again. Let's roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Backup Bradley Above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Let's go ahead and talk about this. The market cap to cryptocurrency collectively is back at $1.5 trillion. Man, I just love seeing it. And Bitcoin is back at 50000 plus. Just quickly, I'm going to move through this. And XRP is at $0.49. Cents. Ooh, is it buying time again? <laughs> I know it's almost buying time again for me. All right, looking at this right here. We are down 9.9%, uh, almost 10% on the seven day, and we're almost back up 8.6% on the 24 hour. So we will keep an eye on that for sure. Now, getting into this very quickly, you can see on Fiat Link where we are, it's showing us at 48 cents this morning, uh, teetering back and forth, and it's saying that we're up 11.41%. We are currently ranging between 49.95 and 43.27. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. This comes from Crypto Bull, and this is actually Crypto Bull and Crypto Maniac, um, I believe as well. Yeah, 101 uh, also. So this comes from both of those. So thank you to Crypto Bull for sharing this. But we may be at the all-time high soon. Let's look at the chart here. You can see it looks like an inverted head and shoulders, if my memory serves me right. Um or maybe it is. I think it is, but we'll see. But at any rate, if you look here, you can see the range, what they're talking about. You know, we're in this particular range right here, teetering in the 40, high 40 cent range. If we get a burst, we may get up here in the uh, 90 cent to a dollar range. And then they're saying, according to the chart, and basically they're mirroring what's going on here in front of the spike, right? And saying that we are poised. The chart is showing, indicators are showing that we may see a pop going Going up in the future here relatively near term we don't know exactly when but looking at the chart it's not too far in the distant future if it's going to follow what the chart is suggesting obviously these are indicators they are not absolute so we'll have to keep an eye on it to see where this goes but let me tell you what we do want to get into today we want to remind everybody through this article uh if you join the gamestop frenzy or dabble with bitcoin get ready for the tax man and it is a great reminder and i want to remind everybody else too you know uh and shout out to uh i trust capital i think i saw this on their page or something like that so shout out to i trust capital the best gold crypto iras but if you are struggling with your crypto taxes remember there's a link in the description and the comment box for clinton donnelly he's the best in the business no doubt about it sec commissioner hester purse calls for legal clarity and the freedom to experiment for DeFi. now I just, i'm not going to read this whole article to you but she does touch on what happened with gamestop she doesn't go into details because she doesn't really uh know all the details of it but she talks about the need basically to move into a new financial system where we can experiment with atomic settlement and things of that nature. Well, she's not the only one, and neither is Ripple and XRP. Look at this from Paxos Global. Uh, Paxos says uh, they plan to apply to become a clearing firm that can facilitate and settle trades. Uh-huh. Yeah get you some of that this is where the world is going and hester purse is certainly well aware of it and she had and you should read that piece i do have it on my twitter you can follow me there and then you can uh read that piece as well and she's obviously been a huge advocate for crypto and getting moved over to a new financial system and obviously she's had the name given to her uh bestowed upon her as crypto mom so this is a little reminder from moneygram from bank xrp the sec has their allegations they've yet to be, be proven ripple believe they have a strong argument we have had great relationships with ripple and i it'd be great to continue to partner with them and 
I'm not going to play the whole minute call. It's not necessary. But MoneyGram just basically stating the deal. What I wanted to show this for is because I wanted to remind everybody that not only in the pretrial did we hear the bombshell uh, defense from Ripple uh, reminding the court <laughs> that uh, Coinbase, or they didn't, they didn't mention it by name, but an exchange back in 2019 approached the SEC and asked if they could list XRP and they were told they couldn't they didn't they didn't tell them no they couldn't because it's a security they allowed them to list XRP and in doing so it creates a real problem for the SEC because how do you explain that they allowed a year before suing Ripple for having XRP as an unregistered security as they allege they allowed a, a major exchange to list the asset that's a problem well, let me tell you what else is a problem. And I hope Ripple and the lawyers are listening. Because even though I'm not a lawyer, this can go to that case. MoneyGram themselves partnered with Ripple, right? That's right. They sure did. And they had to have that partnership approved by the SEC. And that is another problem for them. So now you have an exchange that they didn't say no to about XRP. They didn't inform them that they thought it was an unregistered security. You have a direct partnership with Ripple and MoneyGram for the explicit use of digitalization and settling with XRP, right? Knowing that that was happening and the SEC still allowed that partnership to go through and to happen with MoneyGram and Ripple and never once jumped in to say i'm sorry but you can't use xrp this is a huge problem for the sec and it'll be interesting to see where this goes now this does come back to this case but i want to take you for a second before we get into the next piece of material here and you're going to want all of this so stay with me let's look at the timeline on what is unfolded here just over the last few months First of all, we start, before we get into the last few months, a reminder from Mr. BXRP that Ripple Bank XRPB abandoned in 2018. Could it be back on the table? I firmly believe that it is. I really do. In fact, I've been saying it for months. This happens to be back in November of 2020. November 19th of 2020, I was asking the questions, is Ripple a bank? And I've asked it a long time ago, even before that. But the, the reason I brought that one up in November, you will see in just a second. So we know that Ripple being a bank is something that's been on Ripple's mind since at least 2018. We know that Kraken filed for a license in September 16th of 2020. Very encouraging news. I remember when it happened, when we, when we uh, covered it here on the channel. Then on October 6th of 2020, Chris Larson came out in Brad Garlinghouse and said, Ripple threatens to leave the U.S. over crypto regulation. Little did we know at the time that they were in tolling agreements trying to work out a deal with the SEC, and it was not going well at all. Then we have the actual filing of the business license almost one month to the day later for a business license in Wyoming. No more of this. We're moving out of the country business. They filed for a business license in Wyoming. Did this mean that they've had some headway in some of the negotiations, at least, that they would not have to leave, however this goes, even though things obviously are not worked out? Then we go to the next part. December 12th, we saw the flare airdrop snapshot happen of the XRP ledger. Interesting. Then, two days after that, we see Sandy O'Connor brought on to the board of directors. Where is Sandy O'Connor from? J.P. Morgan. Remember that. We're going to need to remember that. We're coming back to that in a second. Touch on it. Then we had, the day before the actual lawsuit is happening and released, Brad Garlinghouse announces to all of us in the world that today the SEC voted to attack crypto and that we were being sued. The next day, the lawsuit actually came out. Then we have the new president and a new administration moving in here in the U.S. And this is interesting because new priorities in banking, fintech, and derivative sectors. 
And this is interesting from Gibson and Dunn, as it talks about how the president's staff has three regulatory agencies, the SEC, OCC, and CFTC. We come down here, and it talks about the idea of Michael Barr, Treasury official. Both Clinton and Obama administration has been identified as a leading candidate to the head of the OCC. Mr. Barr has served as an advisor on Ripple. <laughs> yeah. And Lending Club's board and the FinTech Advisory Council for Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which also uses Mojo Loop, which also uses XRP and Ripple software. So, interesting there, too. Then we see that Georgetown Law Professor, who was twice nominated as a CFTC commissioner in the Obama administration, has been mentioned as a potential CFTC chair. Uh, while he is still at the Georgetown Law, he founded DC FinTech Week. Each of these agencies will have important digital asset cryptocurrencies issued on its agenda. At the end of the Trump administration, the SEC brought enforcement action against Ripple and two executives on the grounds that the SEC digital asset XRP was unregistered security. A Gensler-led SEC will need to decide whether to continue this action, whether to provide guidance on which digital tokens are in fact securities and which aren't, and whether digital asset exchanges have to register as national security exchanges or alternative alternative trading systems. Mr. Gensler has espoused openness to helping digital assets and cryptocurrencies reach their pool potential, real potential of the world finance, even if doing so requires tailoring some of the rules, regulations to their ecosystem. He's also taken the view of 100 to 200 exchanges are basically operating outside of the U.S. law. So you see the current administration is really geared to really handle this and embrace what is coming. Then we find out February 22nd, give or take a day or two, that the Ripple actually had filed for a business license in Wyoming back in November, right? So now you see the disparity of what actually was taking place in November. We found out in February because we sit at the kids' table because we're retail investors. Okay, let's keep track of that. All right, so now moving back to this, let's get back to it here. So there's the court case, all the stuff that happened. We know about the uh, the uh, registering for a business license in Wyoming, which suggests that we could be seeing something like uh, what Kraken did, you know, getting a banking charter. This may be the next step to that. And in fact, let's take a look at this. This is from the one cent me. Wyoming, Kraken Bank, Digital Assets, Securities, Gold and Silver, Money. This is what's going on in Wyoming right now. Let's just take a look at these clips that he's given us, or they have given us. Um, it says here, Ripple becomes officially registered in Wyoming as a business. And then we see here, Kraken. We are thrilled to announce that the state of Wyoming has approved Kraken's application for the world's first special depository institution. Now, that's interesting. Because then you have to start asking yourself what that is. We'll get to that in just a second. Wyoming Special Depository Institution classifies digital ass or digital securities as digital assets. These SPDIs are allowed to buy and sell digital assets, offer currency, digital asset, exchange services, and lend digital assets. And it says here, Ripple's on-demand liquidity services would likely qualify as a digital asset exchange service, and XRP would likely be considered a digital security itself. <laughs> Where have you heard that before? Now, we've been talking about the idea that XRP may, in fact, be a security, and this is one of the paths that could take us there. That doesn't necessarily mean it's bad for us either. So we'll have to find out if any of this happens. But we're definitely going to pay attention to this because I do believe you could make an argument for the asset XRP to be a security. And I don't believe that means it would mean you own a share in Ripple. I believe, in fact, that it could be its own separate thing. And it be basically be based on the collateral and all the collateral used and liquidity brought collectively by something like Ripple's on-demand liquidity, RippleNet, right? Okay, so now looking here, what is a special depository institution? Quickly, I will say uh, SPDIs may resemble custody banks in that these institutions will likely focus on fiduciary activity, safekeeping, asset management, and servicing. The role of a custody bank is focusing on storing assets. 
Fiduciary management conducting a variety of transactions with assets and providing an on and off ramp to securities market, commodities markets, and customer bank accounts. SPDIs is also may serve as a vehicle for business cash management, operational accounts, and any other purpose permitted by HB 74, excluding incidental activities like fiduciary services, asset management, and custody. SPDIs are prohibited from making loans with customer deposits or fiat currency and therefore are not required to obtain insurance from the FDIC, though they may do so. Okay, so that's what a SPDI is. Well, let's look at some examples of some of the five largest custodian banks in the world. One, the Bank of Mellon. (laughs) Yeah, the Bank of Mellon. Isn't this interesting? Mm Mm-hmm. I think we know that the Bank of Mellon, uh, BNY Mellon, is obviously tied in to uh, uh, Ripple. Let's see what we got here. Is this... Is it right here? I'm trying to find this one particular. Oh, okay. So in this, this is a uh, Ripple gets recognized being the list as one of the top 100 international companies. And in this particular article, it says the cryptocurrency blockchain company is growing year after year with new partnerships and recognitions. This time, Ripple became one of the top 2020 cross-border payments companies as reported by FXC Intelligence. Some of the other companies listed include B- what BNY Mellon, City, UBS, Visa, PayPal, Money Corp, and Azimo, and among others. Ripple was one of the only one from the crypto market working with distributed ledger technology that was included on the list. Now, that's what they were doing in 2020 there, right? But BNY Mellon, as we know, is a huge Ripple partner and has been for many, many years. Well, let's take a look at the list again. Who else is on the list? State Street. Well, we know State Street is obviously applied for digital asset custody. J.P. Morgan. Well, let's come back to that, J.P. Morgan, because this is where we have Sandy O'Connor, who left just a month, basically, after they filed for a business license in Wyoming, which highly suggests the next step is a banking charter or to become a SPDI. (laughs) Or SDPI, whatever it is. So... Then we come back to the list here and see that uh, we know J.P. Morgan's got people uh, now with Sandy O'Connor at Ripple. We know BMY Mellon has been working deeply with Ripple. We know Citigroup has been working with Ripple. And BNB Paribas has also been a longtime partner to launch FX Trading Engine in Singapore, partnered with Ripple. You know, all of this is making a lot of sense. And like I said, The whole idea of Ripple becoming a bank has been a conversation that's been happening for quite some time. One of the things I want to remind people is that disparity between the moment that they actually filed for the license and then the moment that they actually let us know that they did. There was months in between, right? Can you imagine what's actually happening today that's already a done deal that we don't know about yet? That's going to do it for me. Hit the like and subscribe and leave a comment below. Share with somebody you know and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Make sure you check out the links in the description box and the comment section for any products or services you may want or need. I'm telling you, Unstoppable Domains, the dot crypto era is here. They are the GoDaddy on steroids. If you haven't got your dot crypto name, you better go get it because I could tell you right now, there's no turning back. It is the new dot com as far as I'm concerned. And you better get your dot crypto because they just made it to the where they could resolve with all the major search engines like Google, Firefox, and even website protocol, HTTP. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch all of you on the next one.